Welcome back to Gallery Guichard virtually and welcome to virtual exhibition catalog number 23. My name is Andre Guichard. And I'm Frances Guichard. And we have an amazing show planned for you tonight. This is the 10th annual McCray Home Show and we're going to invite you in to a conversation with Nancy and Lorenzo McCray to really get an idea of why they have felt the need to show how they started collecting and why that's so valuable to them, in addition to a lot of other things about how they pick work between the two of them. So I'm really excited. Me too. And you know, it's been 10 years. How many shows go on that long and are successful? And that just shows that there's hunger and people to learn more about the art of the African diaspora and what Gallery Gishard has to offer. And I just can't wait for that conversation with Nancy and Lorenzo. We've become family because we've been together so long and we just continue to enjoy each other and enjoy art. And I'll say again, from Art Basel to the New Orleans Jazz Fest to exhibits regularly at the gallery and anywhere and everywhere in between, this exhibit remains one of my favorites because of the close nature of collectors and potential collectors learning from one another. And it's such an experience that I've been so blessed as an artist, as a gallerist, and as a friend of the McCrae's. So come on in and get to know Nancy and Lorenzo up close and personal. We have two amazing art activists with us tonight. And in celebration of the 10th year of the McCray Show, we are here, and this is virtual exhibition catalog number 23. And we are happy to introduce to you tonight, Lorenzo and Nancy McCray. Hi guys, how Hi. are you? Hi. So how does it feel you guys, 10 years, a decade of creating this amazing platform where so many people have learned about collecting, started collecting, and it always blows my mind what we've created. It's just kind of crazy. Um, our youngest son was down here to say hi to you all virtually a minute ago. And we're just reminded that when he we started, he was a tiny baby. So <laughs> like not a year old. So I can't believe that. Wow. I remember him in the stroller. It was so cool. And now to see him all, you know, big and just so smart. I love it. Yeah. Time goes by really fast. Right. Um, but I'm happy to see voice. the show take the shape that it's been able to take, um, you know, in 10 years. It's different now than it was when we started. The energy isn't any different, but the way that the show you know, um, has has come to fruition um, and changed over time. It's different, but yet still the same. So I love all of that. And yes. All, and all from uh, art purchase on the internet where Lorenzo purchased one of my pieces online and we found out about the mutual interests, Kappas and AKs. But I think it's something about who you all are and your willingness to teach people about collecting. And can you speak a little bit about that? Because I know it's natural for you, but it's been so important for so many people. And it's amazing to watch you all embrace giving in such a phenomenal way, uh, giving the gift of culture. Wow, that's an interesting way to put it. What were you gonna say, Andre? So what I wanted to say is, what was it that made this a passion of yours now where you created this 10-year platform of educating and teaching people at, about for lack of, of a better word being a mccray in terms of understanding collecting embracing artists learn about artists it's just so many things you've done and you've talked about that you talk about every year so how did that happen for you all I don't know whether I will put it that way in terms of being a McRae, but I think that we are passionate about art and collecting and know a lot of people who are interested. And we, for some of our 
friends and associates may have been a little bit uh, ahead of the curve. Um, and so I think it's just a natural part of both of our personalities to share information with people, you know, people we're friends with, people we care about, um, to impart knowledge, information, help someone that's just a part of who we are. And so the fact that there were a lot of friends who were interested in fine art in general, fine art collecting in particular, uh, and specifically collecting from the African diaspora, we said, why not? You know, um, we had resources, there were um, galleries that we knew, like Gallery Cachard, um, amazing <laughs> artists. Um, and I think, you know, we've talked about this before, how some people are intimidated from the traditional um, art buy-in system and don't feel comfortable just going into a gallery and saying, I like this piece and inquiring about the piece. Maybe, you know, they, if particularly an abstract piece, aren't sure of what they're seeing and feel a little um, nervous and unsure about talking to the gallery owner or director or associate about that. Uh, they don't want to look silly. Um, there aren't any prices. It's just, it's a different market, you know? And so I think people are intimidated by that, but people who we were, are, and are friends with didn't feel any type of intimidation and we're open and, and freely talk about the art world as we know it and as we've experienced it um, and impart that information to others. And so having it in the home, you know, we talked about that too, makes it in, inviting for people and comfortable and relaxed. You're in a place in which you are um, friends with the, the owners and your guard is down and there are other people that you socialize with who are there. And it's just, it's a different environment. It's not kind of the stale white cube of a traditional gallery. It's someone's home, which should be a place of comfort um, and relaxation. So um, yeah, I can't believe it's it's been 10 years. We didn't think 10 years ago we'd be doing <laughs> this in 10 years, but it's, it's fun. You know, uh, we love you guys um, and we love hosting it. We, have continued to meet new people in the art world through this endeavor. And so, you know, we get something out of it as well as folks who come to the art show, I think. Uh, you know, I, I find that being in your home makes all of that very authentic. And I, I feel as though people, when they come to your house, they feel, you know, as though you're not just selling artwork, but you're living a part of it. You're, you're so involved in it because you live with it every day. And so it makes it easy for people to come to your home and feel comfortable to have those conversations and to ask questions and, and feel, you know, unsure sometimes and find out more. What are some of the highlights in the past 10 years that you've seen um, with collectors coming, you know, it, with people coming to your home and some of the things that they may have, you know, discussed with you? I think one highlight um, is friends, um, I won't call them by name, but friends and neighbors who have come um, in part, I think, because we are, we like to entertain and we have parties at our house and we have a great circle, eclectic circle of friends that always get along well with each other. So they may have started coming to the show just because of that, because like it's an invite to come to something fun. But then I think the highlight is that the artwork speaks to them. And because we're in a, a comfortable space and we're able to often introduce them to the artist who did the work or be able to talk to them about the work, or you all are able to talk to them about the work. And again, your friends of ours, even though you are artists in your own right and gallery owners and you're putting on this show, they, I'm saying Fran and Andre, you know, like, oh, I don't know this artist, but I can tell, tell you to talk to Fran because she knows a lot about this artist or actually this piece is by Andre and he's right over here and he can tell you what drove him to, you know, make this piece. Um, and so for some of them, this was their first time buying a piece of artwork 
and in and collecting, and collecting it. it and they were all excited about that and then lo and behold they've come back and they bought more and more and they've even been to visit you all in Chicago when they've come out there you know to the gallery so sort of seeing that come you know full circle and even more so one friend in particular um, who has come to the show really every year and who's who started buying recently she will um, send me videos or um, text me and say, do you know this artist? I think you, I'm sure you know them. I'm like salivating over their work. And it's somebody that we do know. And if it's not somebody that I run by, Lorenzo, like, do you know this person? But seeing her um, really learn her own self in terms of being a collector and, in, and now seeing herself, she bought a home recently. So she has her own walls to, to do what she wants with in, in a, a good sized home. But hearing her talk about how the art is speaking to her and just seeing it through her eyes and seeing her develop, that's been a, a highlight. And there have been others. She's not the only one, but there have been others. That really is a highlight to me because that means that what we're, the message we're trying to share is actually being heard, right? That like you can, you yourself can become a collector too, that you don't just have to see this as something that other you know ethnic groups of people do or other people who are older than you do or people who you know just just for whatever reason you don't feel like you know people who did this but we are people that she knows and we're her friends and so she is is like I'm going to do this too because it makes sense and she gets a lot of enjoyment out of it she's already texted me that she will be here for the show. Um, and she's so excited that it's going to be, that there will be a live component that we're able to bring back. Um, but she's been there for the virtual pieces. She has come to you to buy work. So that for me is a, is a huge highlight that somebody can, when I see people getting joy that I feel like we get out of artwork um, who, who didn't previously get it before, especially that's a special spot, like a special highlight for me. I think one of my favorite highlights is how this is a living show and a living relationship amongst friends and people that lived through COVID. And a lot yeah. of things did not survive COVID, but this show did because I think there were so many people that it became more than an art show too. It became community, it became education and COVID wasn't enough to stop that. So the virtual actually then has scaled the show in a way that I don't think we ever would have thought was imaginable because we used to bring 20 to 30 paintings tops every mm -hmm. year, where this year the virtual catalog will showcase 72 paintings. And that's part of what COVID and the lemons to lemonade is about in life and how that's a highlight of how the longevity of this show and what we're doing I think is bigger than us. Yeah and you know there is a, 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 a customer or a friend who came by she's a friend now um, we actually um, sold work to her but she had been coming for years and right Dia and she had not bought anything until she was ready and then she brought artwork and we took it to her home and you know she she now has her space and she says she hung it up and it's just really cool to see that you know people who come and they learn and they see the artwork and then finally get the opportunity to buy that's true yeah and it's a process for people too i respect i think one of the things that people <laughs> respect is you can come to the show for whatever your reason is. You come because you just want to have a good time. You come because you want to look at the artwork. You come because you want to buy. You come because you want to learn. All those things are fine with us. And I think that that's the key, that people feel comfortable, that this is not, just because I'm telling you about it doesn't mean that you have to feel pressured at all to buy anything. You do that in your own time when you're comfortable but I do want people to just learn that they can, that it's possible that you can, it's within your, it isn't something that is just because it's unfamiliar to you doesn't mean you can't do it. Doesn't mean you can't ask the questions. Doesn't mean that the, even the ones that you feel are like are obvious or that, you know, you feel in any other space, you wouldn't 
feel comfortable asking, do that here. And if you do all of that, I mean, we've seen it time and time again, people who, again, I don't know that they would have, if they had just continued to go to, you know, a gallery here or there, see a show, I don't know if they ever would have bought, you know, artwork. I don't. I think that they would have just continued on and like not really thought about it and also not not had conversations because one of the things I do love about the show is walking around and hearing people's conversations about, you know, the artwork that's here, art in general, just the entire art community. I love that. And I love just listening in and hearing hearing what people are thinking and talking about. Um, and I think that that's one, another thing that makes the show really unique and that I'm really proud of that people can be, if we are empowering, especially black and brown people to know that they, they themselves, as we know, um, I told you one collector who also texts me and will be here this weekend, who said when she came to the show the first time, someone said all the pieces were gone that she wanted of your work. And she said, someone said, well, you can commission, one of us told her, you can commission them to do the work. And she said, I could commission someone to do, do a piece of artwork for me? I can do that? Yeah. Yes, you can do that today. Um, that's, that is really impactful. It's impactful to the artist because it's supporting the artists who make the work. But she has this beautiful, she sent me a picture of another piece that she bought today. Um, it's impacted her house and she says that people compliment her. It's her Zoom background, compliment her all the time about her piece. So I think she's coming hungry to get another one. But just the idea that, you know, she said she had never ever considered that before. She didn't even sort of know that, you know, language, which is fine. I don't think most people know it, honestly. But after our show, she did, she commissioned it and she has it hanging on her wall proudly and it's beautiful. I was very jealous when I saw it. Um, and yeah, that, that means that we're doing something right if that happens. Right, right. And men mentioning commissions, you have another uh, friend of yours who commissioned a piece that's going to be unveiled at the show this weekend. Right. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, we didn't <laughs> even know that. Like, I can't wait to see that. Right. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait for her to get it too. <laughs> yeah, no, that's going to be, that's, that's, and see, even this lexicon that we're using, like we're talking about collecting, we're talking about commissioning. Um, those aren't things that for a lot of black and brown people, even people who may have means may not have grown up knowing anything about that and may feel weird. Cause it's like, where do you start? Lots of people who come to the show or we tell about the show, they'll say, uh, I don't know anything about art. And I'll, I'll, the only thing I say is, do you like looking at art? You have your glasses? Can you see pretty well? That's all you need. That's all you need. You don't need anything else. You don't have to have studied. You can ask us anything about the work. Um, everything, it's, it's an, we're open books about this kind of stuff. And I think that that makes a difference because like Lorenzo said, uh, galleries, not yours, uh, but a lot of galleries um, can have a very stale feeling to them and not make people feel comfortable. It's odd given that they sell artwork that you would think, you know, you go to a car dealership, they're giving you drinks and, you know, food and whatever and comfortable seats because they want you to buy a car. But oddly, the art world is so, um, you know, sort of isolated and, and in its own little ivory tower that it doesn't have to do that. And it, so, it, so it, they don't do it. Um, and I think we feel that black and brown people feel that even more when we are in those spaces. And so our goal is to have people feel the complete opposite of that. This is awesome. And I'm gonna ask one more question because I could do this all night, which is I think part of what I love is this is really just what we do is have really great right. conversations about life, art, culture, but one conversation I do want to ask is in regards to both of your collecting styles, because one of the refreshing things for me personally is just to come back to the home and see more work that you've collected over the past year or years. And it's almost like going to your grandma's house looking for something new that she brought. And it's that fun because you know just because of your personalities that something has spoken to your heart, even with all the stuff you have already. So 
what drives you individually and then as a couple with your collection that is continuing to grow? I'm turning that over to the chief collector <laughs> over here, the chief gallery, the gallerist over here, the McCray gallerist over here. He leads our charge in that space. <laughs> and he has great, great taste, phenomenal taste in artwork. I tell people I, I keep my ear to the ground. So I'm always researching and talking to people about new artists um, and just what the art community is doing, not to necessarily follow the, the, the trends, if you will, um, but just to stay current um, and understand the dynamics of the art world and how other people perceive it. And in terms of my own collecting style, like I said this earlier in talking about a lot of people who come to the art show, like I'm focused on the African diaspora and I'm focused on um, art that speaks to me. Now, whether that's abstract or figurative or conceptual, all of these other terms that are used to describe fine art, if it speaks to me, it speaks to me. And normally I think that's because there's some message of um, uh, black life, black beauty, um, sometimes struggle, although I uh, honestly, you know, uh, veer away from if it's sad, um, then that doesn't appeal to you. You know, I want things in the home that are going to uplift me and give me joy. Um, and that can come in the non figurative form. Um, but at the core, I think that is what I find appealing. It has to be a story um, or an idea that the artist is trying to get across, whether that's about the past or the future or, or the present state. And so that um, idea can come in many forms. Um, you know, right now, I think in the last few years, the art world and particularly Black artists have been um, uh, drawn to or primarily um, working in the figurative realm. Um, and art is cyclical, you know, uh, prior to that, I think abstract art um, had its had its day, if you will, but um, all those different types of art, uh, whether it's typical or not, like you see behind me, there's an abstract piece. Um, I'm drawn to all of it. There's still a story that is telling, and sometimes it's just a beautiful piece. Um, sometimes the colors just blend together, and that is mesmerizing, and that's enough in and of itself. Um, and as a couple, um, you know, we go to galleries, I see artwork and I'll show to Nancy and see, or ask her if she likes it or not, just to see whether we're on the same page. And there's some things that I'm drawn to that she's not drawn to, <laughs> that's okay. Um, but, you know, it helps to, I think when we purchase work for the home, you want your partner to also enjoy it. It's our home. So we both want to enjoy the piece. Um, and I don't think either one of us necessarily lets um, our desire for a piece kind of um, outweigh or overrule the other person's um, ideas about it. And I think we have um, similar tastes and interests too in work. And that so that helps. But I could see where. And this is where the story that Lorenzo sort of alluded to is really important. I think that for a lot of times we just assume that art has to be, has to speak to you because you like the colors or you like the design or you like what you're seeing. But one of the great things about the show and things that I think, thing that I tell people all the time about art is to go to galleries, talk to artists and read and research about their work. Because you'll find that a lot of times, and Lorenzo knows this because Plenty of times he'll show me something and I'm like, yeah, I think our kids could have made that. Like, I'm not impressed by that. My 10 year old could have drawn that. But then he's like, 
yeah but look but at the look story, at the story of, yeah. you know the painter that painted this like this they painted this because of whatever the story is and then I'm fascinated by that and I'm like oh my god that that's a story that speaks I know that story that speaks to me and then I'm I see the piece in a whole new light and I don't think when I I don't know when I was growing up I don't think I I didn't really hear that message uh very clearly but I hear it really clearly now and I I sometimes even when I hear a story about someone's work that might trigger me to look it up and not is somebody I don't like but the story of what inspired their piece will can well, I tell you, it can completely change how you see a piece of work. So I think we like a lot of the same stories. We like a lot of the same styles and people. And I think with art generally, you have to be, well, I, I can't, I don't, I don't know. When I see other collections, I see varieties within the collection. And I think Lorenzo is really great at cultivating a good balance of, of that variety. But I don't think you very often see just you know, a person that just has portraits, like I would not want to just have portraits or something like that. But yeah, within reason, um, I think you have to talk about the work. And I think learning the story or learning the story of both the artist and why they painted or however they created the piece, whatever, you know, made them do that is an integral part of appreciating the work. And I think people don't do that enough they may it may be because they don't believe that it would change their impression of it but it but it absolutely will yeah that's why a lot of people like collecting from living artists because you get to hopefully talk to the artists talk about you know the work that they're doing and why and that impacts you and how you see the work you know if you're able to talk to the actual creator and get insight into what they were thinking what the vision was maybe there's a series that helps you see the piece a little differently you know from the creator's point of view um that's an advantage to collecting living artists that's a great point oh, yeah. Talk, you get to really talk to the soul of the artist and connect with the soul of, of the exactly group. exactly That's really where it is right and sometimes the artists are here at the event too um yeah. while we're, we're going to be talking um or while we'll be at your place this will be playing what do you think people will expect um when they come to your place this weekend well this will be new you know this is the mm -hmm. first time since COVID that we are bringing it back live, we're doing the VEC still because we started that during COVID and that, you know, I think was a success. We have been hearing from friends in Oakland and Charlotte and all these remote places who just, you know, they couldn't come. It wasn't practical for them to come. They had other plans. They, you know, they just couldn't come here during the art show. But with the VEC, they could sign on. Everyone was Zooming <laughs> during COVID. And so you all made it happen with the VEC so that people could see the artwork. They could actually uh, be in the gallery and move around. And so that helped people who always wanted to be here still be a part of it. And so, you know, we're continuing with that this year, but this year's a little different because COVID is still here. You know, we're still masking and, and, hopefully people are, are vaccinated etc but this year will be outside so this is a new spin on uh the art show um where it'll start a little later to be a little cooler hopefully outside um but that's different than how we normally do where it's on the the main floor in the basement um and there had been work outside uh this year will be you know exclusively outside and on the VEC. Uh, so it'd be, uh, you know, a new field, I think, for the art show. Um, fun still, um, but a little different than how we've been in the past. And, you know, I think folks will be excited that we are back <laughs> uh, live and in person. Yes. And, and this is just what happens. These conversations all over the house, all over the yard. And I'm glad we can allow them a snippet of being there in person so what a treat yeah this is awesome i can't wait till this weekend yeah. me too me too we are so excited and thank you for 
providing this platform, doing the VEC was, you know, your idea and just showcases your brilliance, both as artists, as business owners, as gallery owners. I, anybody that does, that goes to Chicago and doesn't go to the gallery, you're crazy. You got to go to the gallery. Um, but I really, I, I, I love the fact that you all are who you are and you bring this. We couldn't, I don't know that we would be able to do this with another gallery, honestly, because it's your personalities that make this work because everybody always says Fran and Andre are such great people. So they have this great work. They sell this great work and then this great business, but they're also just really good people. And so you're the people that they can, when I when someone says, I love this piece that's behind you, I told you this, Fran, they're always talking about your piece. I'm like, the artist is here. She's actually the <laughs> co-owner of the gallery and my sorority sister. You can talk to her. I'll take you over and introduce you to her. So I think people are are expecting to see that and and you know wondering what it'll be like after a few years of being in COVID and we're um, hoping that people just enjoy themselves. Awesome, and, and you know, also I love that book that we did because it's that went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. That's right, and I always say you know these are moments in history, and for the largest collector of contemporary catalogs to house as one of the catalogs, the McCray exhibits, and this will be one of them in the future that also will be a part of it because it tells our story. Mm -hmm. People really can even fathom a contemporary couple and family that has lived with art, but more importantly, allowed a community to learn from that experience and kudos to both of you. Yes. for giving in such a unique way, because I think this spawns confidence, this spawns wealth, because you're passing on wealth and culture through collecting original work. And most importantly, it is an honor for us to have been able to meet so many of your friends through art that I think are just amazing people and it speaks to who you guys are too. Yes, yes, and supporting the artists. So yes. that's a major right, right, right. So, yeah, we love we love all of that. So we'll be talking about twenty years in a week of an hour. <laughs> I know, I know. I the time just I can't believe it's ten years. It right. We'll we'll do it in our Basel, Switzerland, or. or <laughs> I like how you're thinking, Andre. I like that. We we'll just keep pushing the envelope or the Dakar biennial. There we go. Right, right. That's right. right. All right. Take care, guys. It's Thanks. Right. See you soon. See you soon. As always, I can talk to the McCrays all night long, which is usually what happens in person after the reception. We just sit back and talk about collecting different artists. And so hopefully, you enjoy this conversation as much as we do every time. Yeah, that was so much fun. I just love the conversation and we'll continue to talk as we actually meet with them in Washington, D.C. And remember, the whole purpose of this virtual exhibit catalog is not that we're in COVID and we're not in person. It's so that those of you who can't travel to Washington, D.C., can participate just like as if you were. And through technology, we're actually able to show more work than we used to with about 30 pieces live in Washington, D.C. You now have 72 works of art to choose from today. And if you see something you like, contact us at gallerygishardsocial at gmail.com or make sure you go to the virtual exhibition catalogs at www.gallerygishard.com. Don't forget to take advantage of two of the participating artists in the McCray 10th Annual Exhibit are Sanal Brown Bowers and Pearlie Taylor, who just opened solo exhibits at Gallery Guichard a week ago. So VEC number 22 and VEC number 21 are also opportunities to see exciting new work during the McCray Home Show, in addition to VEC number 23. And we promise to release the virtual exhibit catalog simultaneously. So whether if you're in Chicago, Houston, or anywhere around the country, you get access to the artwork the same time 
as the people in person in Washington, D.C. Or around the world. Or around the world, that's right. So see art, love art, buy art, live with original art. Hope to see you next time. And thank you again for visiting Gallery Gishar virtually.